for staying with us. So she's a philanthropist and an entrepreneur. She was the CEO of the former Body Enhancement, Enhancement Limited, which pioneered cosmetic surgery back in 20, 2001. In 2003, she founded the non-profit organization called Empower 54, mm. which offers humanitarian programs to underprivileged women and refugees. She has received so many international awards and recognitions. She's also featured, uh, she was also featured actually twice for her entrepreneurial achievements as a leading African female boss and also as one of the 50 top women changing Africa. Welcome with us, Princess Mudukwe Ozola. Please give her a resounding welcome. Woo! 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 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. We're very excited about having you because we mm. know the kind of work you're doing out there. I mean, you're, you, you're, you've come a long way from cosmetic enhancement to charity work. Could you just tell us how you made that bridge and how you, how you made that conversion from going into co going cosmetics in the first place and then now you do a lot of charity work, especially in the Northeast? Yes. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. We, Body Enhancement became a household name in 2001, which meant my doors were open to every and anybody that needed cosmetic and reconstructive surgery, but they were paying clients. What uh, happened was a man came to my office with his wife. She had burns and lacerations. And they were telling me that they had gone to so many people seeking assistance, financial assistance, to do free surgery for her. But no one was helping. And I couldn't understand that because it was obvious this lady had serious deformities. Mm. And the man looked at me and he said, Madam, why don't you help us? When you speak, people would listen. Mm. And I swear, I just looked at him. He left my office, I picked up my phone, I called my plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I said, okay, I'm starting a nonprofit. I'm gonna do free surgeries for underprivileged people. That's it. He's like, okay. And that's how it started in 2003. Mm. Wow. And it's been 15 years now. Beautiful. Well done. Well done. I met you for the very first time, not one-on-one um, -on -one, in 2005, when you were one of the pre-judges for Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria. And I was one of the contestants. <laughs> and then I remember that when you came, uh, everybody was whispering, the boobs lady, the boobs lady, the boobs lady, because you were famous at that time. For yeah. that. Yeah. Looking back at your life, you started work, working at 18 while you were in college at McDonald's. Yeah. Now let me paint that picture quickly here. It's like the uh, daughter Big. of um, Amber, Our princess, daughter of Amber, the, the, the governor, you know? working in Mr. Bix. That <laughs> no. was how that was. <laughs> you don't do at 18. It's hold a on, lifetime Nima. honor. No, Ni Nima, a hold on. Princess, okay, a better, royalty. Okay, working at McDonald's. Simple. Ma working at Mr. Don't Bix. Use. Let's come hey, down hey, here. Okay, okay, yeah. You know, very very small. So small okay. from <laughs> <square to words. laughs> All right. So and um, it was you know enlightening for me seeing that. You had everything, you were a princess, you had the money, but then you decided to work because you've always been independent. What can you say to the youths of today that do no, no longer believe in the dignity of labor? Mm -hmm. It was a personal decision to work, even at McDonald's. When my parents sent me to school in America, I was 17. So I have been on my own literally since I was 17 years old. And the conception, uh, my family, aunties, and everybody said, oh, you're sending Modupe, oh, she's too happy go lucky, that one is just, she's not gonna survive. <laughs> so I was like, oh, really? Okay. So even when it got to the point that when it was time to go to school, I said, no, my parents shouldn't send me money, I was gonna prove myself. Mm. And of course, I was so young, what skills did I have to go anywhere? And even because we always went on holidays abroad anyway, and I have cousins that, would go on holiday to America and work at McDonald's. And I thought it was so amazing. I was like, really? <laughs> really? So of course, with no skills, no nothing, That's the major job that was the first job. And just like any other youth in America or any teenager, your first job is McDonald's. Right, yeah. of course. And it taught me a lot. It taught me discipline, mm -hmm. which today is applied to everything I do. Right. I learned the dignity that, you know what, I can work from morning till night. That's why till today I can stand on my feet and work from 
6 a.m. to 3 a.m. Let me, and come, let me come to that, Wendukwe, because mm -hmm. a lot of people see you and automatically they always just remember the cosmetic part. Mm. But you're doing so much work in the Northeast. I want you to talk us, to us a bit about that because I know you were helping to find 1,500 children, um, you were to rehabilitate them. Um, tell us about that story. You took them from Bama to Maiduguri. Give, let people understand that this is not just about you as a person. It's the work you're doing. I want you to tell our viewers what you've done so far on that, on that arm. Well, Empower 54 has been in existence for about 15 years. Initially, it was called Beers Foundation. Okay. When we got involved in the IDP programs, that was in 2014, and we have done work uh, in Adamawa, Gombe, Bornu states, from rebuilding schools destroyed by Boko Haram to empowering women <coughs> based skills. Coincidentally, we accompanied the deputy governor of Bornu state to Bama at that 24, I mean, this was a couple of years ago. Bama was not accessible at that time. Right. If the military didn't take you, you couldn't get there because right. Boko Haram still attacked the road and all of those things, and it was a very secure route. By chance, we saw, we came across children who were severely malnourished, and with uh, going into serious planning with the state government and the military, I actually led the delegation to evacuate those malnourished wow. children from Bama. So I led the team. Thank you. And Bama is just uh, two kilometers from Sambisa Forest and all of those bits. So within a span of two days, we evacuated about 1,800 malnourished children and their family members. And the reason why they were malnourished because they had just been rescued from Sambisa. So it wasn't as though they were not giving them camps, yeah. any food in the camps. So I was saying that um, looking at you, I mean, it's just so easy to look at you and come up with, oh, she's beautiful, you know, her skin is so, sense. yeah, she yes, aged skin like penny. butter. But then, Don't you know, <laughs> then going through your profile and reading about you and seeing what you do, it's just so, you know, su surprising. Why do you care? I mean, I met you earlier this morning. I shook your hand. You have a firm handshake. You know, that's already strong. like, for me, this is a, a sign of a strong person. Why do you care? You've never been... I, I don't think you grew up in poverty, you know, you didn't see that. You went abroad for your holidays. And then you care about kids in the Northeast. Mm. Why? Because we're supposed to care. Mm. All of us. As a human. That's why we're here. Yes. And we have different callings. You all have your callings. You, your, your calling in life, uh, be it through your profession as for now, because you don't know what you, you right. know, involve to tomorrow. You're educating <coughs> the public and things like that. For me, when I started doing charity in 2013, I mean, uh, 2003, I realized that my life changed. For me, my purpose is to help. Right. Mm. I can't, I put my money into it. programs. Um, sometimes I spend at least, I finance about 90% of our charity programs. Wow. Oh my God. And you can't tell me to stop. I don't know how to, even if I wanted to. I'd like to talk about the, your personality because every public person in Nigeria that we thought mattered, thought twice before they moved into some, um, any, a, anything close to Sambisa. I can say <laughs> 1,000 kilometers close to Bono State entirely. Mm -hmm. People would think twice about it. What is it about your background that gave you that courage, that built you to the, that person that, you know, you could dare anything to help people, to go anywhere to help people? What was it that built you? I want to understand your background. Something must have happened, maybe your mom or the way you were raised, something must have made you that bold or, or courageous. I'm glad you used the word bold because I used to get into trouble for being too bold as a child. <laughs> I've always been referred to as fearless and bold. Even if we did naughty things that would get punished, I wouldn't lie, but like, yes, I did it. Because as far as I was concerned, if I had the nerve to do it, I have the nerve to fess up to it. Yeah. And my parents always encouraged me to be me. And if I do decide I'm going to embark on a project, I am going to deliver. Yesterday, we spoke to somebody who is doing so much work. She was a guest on our show. She's doing so much work in, um, helping to accommodate children living with cerebral palsy. And one of the highlights of the conversation yesterday was the fact that she wasn't getting a lot of help. She was just managed by herself. Mm. And, I, and I, I, I mentioned the fact that philanthropists across the world, in, in the West, always look for these opportunities to support people. Now, you're a Nigerian. You're one of those who are somewhat privileged and have the opportunity to do this. How do you get all the people within your social circle to get involved in these kind of things? Because a lot, the, the people need help. That, that woman that I was saying, our guest yesterday, she's the one, she's funding this thing by herself, the Cerebral Palsy Center. So what are you doing? Can you just enlighten us a bit on how do we have Nigerians who truly care like you do? Yes, there are many. 
Mm. But many people don't know how to get engaged. Oh. And depending on the programs, uh, it's not everyone that can go on the field. I love field work. My thing is field work. Right. Okay, fine, I'm dressed like this, but mm. <laughs> I'm jeans, t-shirt, baseball cap, right, yeah. jumping from speed boats and gun boats. Right. That's my thing. That's my high. Not everybody can do that. It's not everyone that can see deformed children and, feel. and be okay. Mm. But that is also okay that you are not okay with that. Just being at home, maybe social media, saying, look, support this organization, that is already helping. Telling your friends, okay, you know what, why don't we put some clothes together and donate? You're helping put clothes on some people. So there are many ways people can get engagement. Everybody seems to think it's always about cash. Look, we all need cash. <laughs> we all have our responsibilities. Right, you know true. what I mean? Yeah. So when you say donate to help one child in uh, Bono, you're like, ah. The people in my village, they're looking for food too. Yeah. I know how many family members are called, you know. Let's so. go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with our guests. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. You'll be